women's roles and rural women's roles in particular and contributions to agriculture often remain uh, undervalued by policymakers and in investment and implementation processes and they generally have less access to rural advisory services than men. In the production sector, men is dominant and as in the collection sector, is men also dominant. In the distribution and market sector, men is dominant. So you have to interfere with men uh, to give the slot to women to do their business. The difference between um, provision of training and adoption of training or any of those other things that are needed um, we were seeing a real disparity and the, rec yeah, the recognition came that actually training is conducted um, typically on the farm and women are not present at the time training is conducted because they have family responsibilities or other community roles. Similarly we found that although women do many of their roles and most of them work in some of the cocoa farms, actually they don't receive a payment for that. That goes through the household and typically through the men. Rural women need access to, to finance and access to markets. Uh, contribute to higher incomes, higher, better uptake of technology by end users, women and men, and increased productivity and better management of on farm. There's been a lot of focus on the enabling environment, on decent work, but until we revolutionise the private domestic sphere where we recognise and value and redistribute the work that is largely done by women and girls, there is no economic empowerment. I think we need to recognise that women have skills and knowledge and it's not that they are just waiting for the benevolent individual or man or organisation to come and give this to them, but maybe we need to remove the discrimination and the barriers and the obstacles so that they can exercise their freedoms and have the same opportunities that are available to me. So I think that we need to be able to change and shift and, and we really demand from industries and really say that you know we need to be able to depict women in a role that is strong, that is independent and that is confident. Uh, establishing a training platform on my farm that enables uh, young people to come in and get um, business skills, technical skills as well as compliance skills. We have provided markets for farmers to sell their milk. We get milk from 600 farmers, 80% of whom are women, and who previously had nowhere to sell their milk. So now they have a market. We run an education trust whose mission is to finance the secondary education of very poor children and mentor them through life. Uh, this is an equal opportunity foundation for both boys and girls. Helping them with supply chain and accessing uh, to the market train the woman on the knowledge and post-production process to select uh, produce for seeds and consumptions and to packing it uh, for the different purposes at the production center as well as to train them for having skills to trade. Looking at what, uh, what will change needs to take place, it's so much easier to have those kind of conversations with our business leaders if they already understand that gender is part of a conversation for the business that needs to take place. So having that support from our chief executive as well as from the 30% of our board that are currently women, um, knowing that there is a goal for that to be parity by 2030 and that that is then supported by a network of uh, Cargill's women's groups. And that means that it makes life so much easier in uh, taking that forward. You need to be actively present and by that I mean that we need, I need to be creating opportunities for other women. I need to be pushing boundaries, I need to be fighting for change, I need to be standing up against bullying and intimidation and be constantly vigilant for the insidious nature of patriarchy because anything else for me is a betrayal of other women. We develop agricultural entrepreneurs and we believe that this is the way that we can, if we can start enabling people to create their own entities that are sustainable, then they're able to feed their own families, they're able to be more confident and independent. The determinant factor to empower women is to influence and to involve men. We actually have a girl right now who is in deep doing an MBA and she's already helping a lot to change and transform her family and her community. She's actually come back and she's sponsoring one of our girl students who is an uh, HIV AIDS orphan. Women need to see women doing 
what women can do. And once from a young age we can identify what is possible, I think then we can start thinking out of the blocks. At operational level, we don't think about is the environment well suited for women? Do we have daycare facilities, preschool facilities, that women do feel secure to work in, uh, in rural areas? In terms of finance, they need to see role models. Eventually they were able to see that they can open bank accounts, which they did, and so we pay them through the bank accounts. And because they have bank accounts, they can get credit from micro, micro credit companies. So role modeling and encouraging them, like my friend at the end said, is, is very, very important. The other very important thing is that uh, Especially for the rural girl, access to education is key because education is a game changer. So it is very important that we give uh, the girls an equal opportunity for them to get quality education. The most important subject is so a woman can become a champion or can play a significant role in the decision making process. So how can they get land, how can they get access to market, how can they get capital, knowledge and everything. It's when women has the strong role in the decision making process. It's important to prioritise methodologies that focus on education and capacity development to close gender gaps and uh, especially in relation to knowledge and skills. One um, is to ensure the fit uh, with local and regional contexts, taking account of the diversity of gender issues in agriculture in different places and among different uh, cultures and peoples. To secondly embrace um, pluralism uh, and foster partnerships across a wide range of uh, public, private and civil society stakeholders involved in agriculture. Third, um, to ensure initiatives are accountable, demand-driven and participatory. Fourth, uh, that we tailor human resource development efforts to build the capacities of women. And lastly, to ensure that initiatives um, support gender equality and women's empower economic empowerment um, with regard to agriculture, food security and nutrition. So WFP recently established or initiated a partnership with Gallup and working with the FAO Statistics Division to explore five elements of um, gender equality which we're looking at being um, reproductive freedom, freedom from violence, decision making ability, financial self-sufficiency and paid and unpaid work and how that underpins an individual's experience or not of gender equality and the connection between that and food security. So we have this broad reach, this broad representation, diverse expertise and experience who will collectively produce a really rigorous measure for assessing and um, developing or acquiring data on gender equality and food security that is going to concretely feed into advocacy and action and accountability on both of these goals.